Somewhere between the edge of being alive and feeling dead Welcome back to the channel. In today's video you can see in Prince George for Thursday it's supposed to be pretty cold between minus 29 to minus 37 Celsius and I decided to do a road trip from Prince George BC to McBride BC driving in those cold winter conditions and uh, you can see here the quick summary if you don't want to see the whole video is the first section uh, we had about 65% uh, efficiency uh, for the drive there and that was at about minus 25 degrees Celsius on the way back we had about 56% efficiency and that was at about minus 27 degrees. It got as cold as minus 30 on the trip home, but I think it averages it out. Compare that to a summer trip where we drove from Prince George to uh, the same area in McBride. I had about 70% efficiency. So that would be in May. So you can kind of look at those differences. All the stats are there on the screen. You can see the drive uh, on this relive uh, animation. Uh, overall, I was quite surprised when I plugged in the statistics into uh, the Tesla Navigator. It told me I'd arrive with between 5 to 10% left over at McBride with those conditions, but I actually arrived with about 25%. Anyways, let's take a look at the video clips and we'll wrap it up at the end with uh, things we learned and some tips. Thanks. Heading to McBride, according to the Tesla trip planner, says we should arrive with 5%. Earlier I thought it was going to be 10, but I guess I was wrong. It is freezing cold out from the garage. It started off at minus 2. But uh, it's like minus 20-something out there. All right, so you can see right now it's showing minus 23 degrees out. Just have up the energy graph here. Tesla has this neat little built-in thing showing where are your energy is going towards, whether it's in cabin heating, <clears throat> the driving that you're doing, you know, how fast you're going, the elevation that you're driving on, heating up the battery, all that kind of stuff. So you can see that stuff here. We'll look at that later. heading out of town now and uh, hitting the highway highway speeds I guess the rest of the drive next two hours should be heading out highway 16 east to McBride looking at some beautiful mountains bluebird skies and cold temperatures see how we do this trip to McBride you can see our current drive 214 watt hours per kilometer is what we're getting right now with these current conditions um, I guess also just to point out our tire PSI pressures um, right around 40 PSI this front tire is a little bit uh, has a small leak in it so it's a little bit lower but that's tire pressures and uh, energy graph this kind of shows um, what we're using most of the energy for. So driving, of course, is taking about 16%. Climate is getting close to 3% um, of the total battery consumption at this point. All right, we're just coming up to the Viking Ridge Trailhead here. We're at about 66% remaining. All right, so we're just... Uh, 47% left so we're past the point of no return now so that means going back would be a bad idea because it probably wouldn't make it right here near Erg mountain trail right up there we've got uh, about 66 kilometers left to get to McBride with 46% charge we're gonna do pretty good according to this it says we have 29% uh, that will arrive with so a lot more than I thought I really thought this cold weather was gonna take quite a bit more but uh, so far uh, things have been great. Alright so we're just pulling into McBride here. We'll be at the charging station in a couple minutes. 
Um, you can see here we've got 26% charge, so basically one quarter left of our full charge. Uh, these are the consumption stats, just showing how much 19% driving, 2.9% climate, rest elsewhere. At least that, yeah. So anyways, uh, that's the statistics. We made it to McBride, no problem. All right, so we've arrived in McBride at the charging station, 25% left. And uh, we have a car here to my left charging there. Hopefully the other charging station here is working. There are two of them, we'll find out. All right, so we're here in McBride. This charging station is not working. This one is, but we've got someone charging here, so we have to wait about a half an hour before we can charge. So we're gonna head over to Petro Canada where there's superchargers being built. Uh, they're supposed to be up this quarter, which would make this a lot better, but for today, we'll just have to wait. All right, so we're here in McBride at the Petro Canada. It's like minus 25, 26. And uh, you can see here they're building Tesla superchargers, which supposedly should be ready this quarter, first quarter of 2024. No meter yet over there, so I'm still waiting for BC Hydro to do that, but uh, that's the current status and we're waiting for the BC Hydro station, of which there is only one, the other one's down, and that's unfortunate. All right, so we are charging at 41 kilowatts in McBride, BC at the BC Hydro station. You can see the little frosty icon right there. It means the battery got cold while we were sitting and waiting. But uh, here we go. We're going to charge up and uh, be here for a while. Uh, this charger is 50 kilowatt. And the one across the road over there, the Tesla superchargers that will be coming up, they will be 250 kilowatt. So that's five times faster than this one. Time to go. We are at 90%. Should arrive home with about 18%. I'm gonna guess 10%, but we'll maybe go a little faster, we'll, so we'll see, but we're done. See the tire PSI is there up to 40 so you can see how much they drop in cold temperatures we are up to minus 29 celsius and 54 percent state of charge and we're very close to the hungry creek forest service road turnoff so just pointing that out all right guys we're just passing viking ridge but uh, just to show on the uh, screen here, I decided since we're doing all this cold weather testing, we are going to supercharge. I, and I plugged into the navigator. You do this because Tesla will precondition the battery for best charging speed. So minus 28 right now, might even be colder, might be warmer when we get there. But in the next hour, we are gonna see what happens when you have full preconditioning happening, showing up in extremely cold temperatures, what kind of performance you get with a 2020 all-wheel drive Tesla Model 3 supercharging. One more thing while I remember, it's interesting. Originally, I had punched in just to drive home, and I was going to arrive home with, a, it projected 16% state of charge. As soon as I punched in that I wanted to supercharge, it now drops to 10% when I arrive in Prince George and, and the supercharger is closer than my house so that tells me the moment you are going to supercharge it's already preconditioning the battery right now so it's warming up the battery for when I arrive there so it's going to take five to six percent of my battery capacity between now and the time we get to Prince George to warm up the battery so that's just a mental note for cold weather all right so we've hit minus 30 degrees Celsius we are 19 kilometers from the superchargers in Prince George. I can see the city lights straight ahead. It's the vehicle parked there. Not sure why. Could be an EV. Is that Toyota? No, Kia. Okay. 
but they're not charging, but they're just parked in front of it. Odd. <laughs> Wrapping up. Almost 150, 153, still ramping, 156. 220. Oh yeah, rip it, rip it. 230. Oh, went up, went down. Okay, so in conclusion, what did we learn? In cold weather with your electric vehicle, there's a number of things. Um, the main thing is range definitely is affected. I think we all knew that. You will have your range cut between 40 to 50% when you're minus 25 or colder, maybe minus 20 and colder, it'll vary. But uh, beyond that, um, you know, it all comes down to efficiency. So. You know, some of the positives for cold weather is, of course, the heat in your electric vehicle is pretty immediate. So within five minutes, even in these minus 20, minus 30 conditions, your cabin can warm up pretty quick. You can defrost your windows, etc. Um, beyond that, um, it's important to remember to precondition your battery when you're arriving to a fast charger to get the fastest speed. That's an important thing to notice. But really... Um, the convenience of being able to just plug in your car when you get home, most of your driving will be around town. Um, it's really convenient to have an EV in the wintertime. The traction is phenomenal. I know in my family, uh, my daughter, my wife, they much prefer to take the Tesla out uh, in the wintertime, in the summertime, over our, our Ford F-150 gasoline. So uh, for a number of reasons. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative. And uh, it was really cool to find out about the supercharging speed. Uh, when you have enough time to precondition your battery to warm it up, you can get pretty fast charge times, which is great for winter time. So then it means if you have uh, chargers that are, you know, uh, frequent enough on your road trip, you're really not going to wait that long. So anyways, hope you guys have a great day.